Hi, right, today I'm going to do a Blue Retro install on my Dreamcast. Fantastic console, really, really easy to mod. Absolutely love it. So, just going to choose which one I'm going to pick, and I think I'm going to go for this uh, smoked grey one that looks absolutely lovely. I want to pair the Switch Pro controller to it. Any controller with Bluetooth will connect, but that's what I'm going to use. You can use ready-built dongles that are obviously in place, but I've decided to go with the ESP32. It's literally about £10 install, so really, really cheap and easy to do. So I'm going to add a switch to my unit. This isn't really necessary because it does have port detection and stuff like that. So I want to be able to turn my ESP32 off internally so that I can choose whether to have it just as a standard Dreamcast or whether I'm going to have it uh, Bluetooth enabled. So once we get the console in bits, we're going to need to configure the SP32. So if you visit Dark Cloud's Blue Retro site there I've linked, it gives you all the instructions of how to configure the SP32 because it needs to be um, configured specifically for the Dreamcast. Obviously each model that this unit fits can be configured individually like for the PS1 and stuff like that. So once you've got it configured, you in this instance obviously there was an update firmware available so obviously I carried that out as well. Once it's all configured, you do need Bluetooth on your computer because you pair the SP32 to your computer and that enables you then to go in and look at the global configuration where basically you can set up the actual operation of each port so this is obviously output port 1 it's listed as a gamepad but here you can also add a virtual memory card so we click save there and it makes a virtual memory card which is really really cool because obviously with it being internal Bluetooth you don't have the uh, VMU available. Now that we've got the ESP32 configured and updated and, and paired everything ready, that needs to be disconnected from the PC ready for the install actually into the Dreamcast. Next thing is obviously the controller board because it needs to interface directly with the controller board. Here's a wiring diagram that um, obviously source on the left hand top there of where you need to connect your ESP32 to the Dreamcast board. Um, nothing particularly complicated, I just found a, a, a scrap ribbon cable that I'd got loafing around, so literally this install is less than £10. When you compare what the pre-built dongles are, which are you know usually around the £20-£30 mark, um, it's, it, this is absolutely peanuts. I do love the internal idea, because it's there's nothing external, it, it keeps the console looking clean. Um, you don't, you, you know, this does all four ports, whereas individual dongles only do individual ports and stuff like that. So I think this is a real worthwhile venture on any Dreamcast, really. I think I might do this in future. I thought the software was a little bit finicky to set up. The wiring install doesn't have to be perfect. It's, it's pretty simple, nice big pins to connect to. This is the SP32 itself, so again, refer to the wiring diagram and it will let you know which pins need to go where, which is absolutely great. Nothing particularly complicated here. This is just allowing power for the board and then the communication between this and the Dreamcast board. I also decided to do a little blue LED mic, uh, mod. Very, very simple. These power connectors there um, on the back of the Dreamcast controller board it's just power and earth basically to the LED um, I bought some pre-soldered pre-configured little blue LEDs absolutely fantastic live goes to there and then the black wire obviously earth is in the middle of those pins so very very simple and just bend them round the top of the circuit board and I just used a little bit of hot glue to affix the LEDs to the top a little bit of captain tape there just to make sure I've got no shorts between the board and the actual, you know, the base plate of the Dreamcast. Just popping the board back in now. This Dreamcast has had many mods. As you can see there, there is a ODE replacement. Um, I don't ultimately go with this ODE replacement uh, just because I had a few issues with it booting. I didn't realize at the time that this particular Dreamcast had a modified BIOS that I'd done, which allowed it to boot straight into Dreamshell and this conflicted with that particular ODE. So I decided to, a little bit of a change round, which I'll show more about at the end really. Um, I decided to go with a, a, an IDE solution, the compact flash. But we'll get to that at the end. So obviously everything's wired in. I double-sided the ESP32 down onto the circuit board. 
once we've got this built back up it's a pretty simple procedure when you boot up the Dreamcast uh, you hold the pairing button on your controller and it automatically pairs to the Dreamcast ESP32 and then you've got all your functions there as you would normally have on a Bluetooth controller which is absolutely fantastic and a really really clean nice install I also decided to do a USB-C power conversion on this from Retro 6 so this is internally what's going on in the Dreamcast there's a uh, IDE converter to Compact Flash where I'm running uh, Redream uh, it's had the battery mod, LED mod, power mod decided to nick a um, Xbox heatsink and put that on the back just for a bit of extra cooling so quite a few little mods in there I'm really pleased with it how it's turned out so far and it's really really easy to work with I think you'll agree those blue LEDs really really do make a statement there and I think the the original LED for blue is, is obviously really good as well I like the fact that I've got the switch on the top I'm not sure whether I like it there or not but I'll see if it grows on me so if you made it this far thanks for watching and I'll catch you again in the next video bye for now